Okay, everyone, so sorry about the delay. YouTube Studio was giving me a hard time, so I went ahead and I just popped here on StreamYard real quick because I knew how to do everything as best I could. So if you are new, hello, my name is Vinny, and I am a reseller of vintage goods as well as newer items for Amazon, but my channel is mainly focused on the vintage stuff that I love to find when I'm outsourcing. Let me give some people some time to go ahead and jump on real quick. I hope. <laughs> Here we go. Hello, everyone. I'm sorry if it took so long. I don't understand why YouTube Studio was giving me a hard time. It's probably just because my computer is about as outdated as shoulder pads and I need to get a new one. So hello everybody, thanks for popping in. I greatly appreciate it. So to start out with what my title says, we can start with my favorite Golden Girl Burns. I had to keep them PG, of course. I couldn't use anything too <laughs> naughty. So let's go ahead and start off with that. We'll start off with Dorothy's just because hers is relatively long. So Dorothy's burn that I picked is about, I think it was early on in the show when I guess she and Blanche were fighting over a man like they usually do throughout the entire series. And it's pretty notorious. It goes, Blanche, have you heard the latest ad campaigns? Join the Navy, see the world, sleep with Blanche Devereaux. Join the Army, be all you can be, and sleep with Blanche Devereaux. The Marines are looking for a few good men who have not slept with Blanche Devereaux. Every time I hear that one, I crack up laughing. So I gave Sophia two of them because she... Um, they kind of coincide with each other. It goes along with the episode where both she and Blanche go for the Cuban cigar mogul, Fidel Santiago. So Blanche comes out into her living room wearing a really sheer nightgown, of course, trying to uh, seduce Fidel because uh, he was with Sophia. So she, so they get into a little tussle after uh, Sophia calls her the 50-year-old mattress. Beat it, you 50-year-old mattress. And then, of course, Blanche is, of course, horrified and disgusted. So, you know, she starts calling her an array of names, and Dorothy stops her, and then she goes, my apologies. Now I'm going to go take a long, hot, steamy bath with just enough water to barely cover my perky bosoms. And then Sophia, being who she is, claps back and goes, you're only going to sit in an inch of water? And of course, that cracks me up every time I hear it. And then, of course, Blanche freaks out and she is, you know, hysterical, wanting to really get at Sophia and just kill her, basically. And then, you know, they get into this whole conversation of, you know, because uh, I guess they were going to coincide with the dating. Like he was going to have Blanche one hour and then Sophia the next. So they go through that whole phase and then uh, Blanche goes midnight for dessert. And then of course, Rose looks at her naive woman that she is. And she goes dessert at midnight. And then Sophia cracks back and goes, there's always room for jello. That is funny too. Alrighty, so now we're going to go on to Blanche real quick. And there are a ton of good comebacks for Blanche, but I, again, I had to be selective and I didn't want to say anything that was too naughty. So this one in particular comes from an episode where I guess it was Blanche's birthday and she was asking Sophia about advice about getting older and, you know, so she, so of course, Sophia, being the sassy woman that she is, she says a few things like, you're old, you sag, get over it. So what if you knew Jesus personally or wake up and smell the coffee, a fossil? And then 
Blanche cracks and says, my mistake. I thought that since you looked like Yoda, you were also wise. And the other burn that I'd like to share. Now, hi, Laura. Hello, everyone. Sorry if I'm ignoring you. <laughs> so the last burn that I'd like to share with you all comes uh, for Blanche, that is, is the episode where all of them were posing nude for a, an artist for some sculpture. And I guess Blanche was upset that Laszlo had asked Rose to pose also. And like, they got into a little scuffle over it. <laughs> and um, like after Rose says, he asked me to. And then Blanche just goes, I sure don't know why. He'd go to SeaWorld if he wanted to see a naked whale. Okay. So for Rose, Rose, of course, of the four gals is very naive and is not, you know, let's just say they kind of made her character a little bit more dumb than we would have liked. But she low key has a savage point also because. Sometimes what she says is out of pure innocence and isn't meant to be as harsh as it comes out. So I guess they were cleaning up after a party or whatnot, like a huge gathering of people. And then one of the things that she says, I guess after Blanche asks, do you know what I hate most about after throwing a party? And Rose, of course, just being the naive, sweet, innocent, loving person that we all know her as, comes up with trying to find your underwear in the big pile. So that was, that's one that I always crack up at whenever I hear it. The next one that I'd like to mention is another one of my favorites is um, Blanche has a hard time apologizing for when she's wrong. And she comes into the kitchen while Rose is cooking something. And she says, these are the hardest words for me to say. And of course, Rose cracks, not tonight, because we all know what Blanche is. I'm not going to say the words, but we all know what she is. <laughs> and then the last thing that I'd like to share with you all of the Golden Girl Burns, so that way this doesn't get too long, is so the scene where uh, Rose had an intelligence moment when she was talking about the Journal of Psychology and Blanche just does not believe that Rose actually read something and was speaking about it and she actually understood what it meant. So she says something along the lines of, I have a hard time believing that you even read this thing. And so Rose just storms out of the kitchen and goes, believe what you want, see if I care. Then as she walks out the door, she kind of mutters, hypersexual itch bay. And that also kills me because Rose just does not do that kind of stuff. So that is all the Golden Girl Burns. I wanted to get through those quickly so that way it, this video didn't run too long. So for anybody that is new to this kind of a thing, this is a live sale and let me get to my rules real quick. So this is a first come first serve. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys an item and what you're gonna do is I'm gonna tell you how much it is. I'll give you a really good look at it. And then we will, I'll tell you the price and I'll also tell you the number. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna comment the number in the live chat. So whoever is the first that we see is who gets it. So if an item did not sell in the live show, you can always email me. The email is going to be linked in the description box below. So my email information is skullking95680 at yahoo.com. What I'm gonna need from you when you email me is your email, the email address you'd like me to use for PayPal invoices. And I'm gonna need your shipping address so that way I know where to send you the stuff. I also want you all to be mindful of where you are located, whether it be Canada and California or Texas, because it can be very, very pricey to send even just the smallest thing. Like, for example, somebody bought something from me and they live in Canada and it went first class, but it was eleven dollars and sixty four cents. It's, it's not cheap, unfortunately. But that's just how it is. And I don't know if it is, um, 
I don't know what it was, but um, I put in the invoices when I did the last sale that put that you go through friends and family on PayPal so that way a fee doesn't get charged to the transaction. I guess it does. And I, um, I had to refund somebody because they paid for two invoices that I sent them because I, I guess I just got overwhelmed or whatever. And they had, so I had to refund them and I just put it through goods and services when I issued the refund. That way there wasn't a fee charged and she got her full refund that she got back, that she paid. So I don't know if you have to go through the goods and services because every time that someone doesn't go through that, I do get charged a fee. I mean, it is what it is, but we tried our hardest not to. And another rule I'd like to add into this is this is going to be combined shipping. So if you do buy multiple items, you're not paying shipping for one item. You are buying multiple and you're getting one shipping cost for multiple things. And before we go ahead and actually get started through all the rambling, my dad did see how well some of the things that I had had for a while that had not sold sold on these live sales, and he gave me some stuff to try out and see if you guys will like and will purchase. So I got some things from him that we're going to give a go, and then I've got things also. I'm going to try to go back and forth between mine and his, so we'll see what happens. I guess I'll start out with one thing for me. Take off the tag here. Now, I don't know who makes this. I bought it a while ago and everyone was finding this kind of glass. It's, I think it's a candy dish, or at least it could be used for that. Scalloped edged um, black glass dish. This is what the bottom looks like. No markings on it. But it's, what is this, like scalloped edges? It almost looks like it could be a clamshell. That's just how I think it looks. So there are no cracks or chips. It's footed. Ugh, I just completely showed you guys the price of that. <laughs> Take that off. So it is footed. It possibly could be Ellie Smith D, but I'm not exactly sure because there isn't a mark on it to determine that. So this is going to be $12, and it's number 33. Number 33 is going to be $12. This would look great on a table full of candy or if you just want to put your loose change in there. But yeah, very, very nice piece. I, I think it's rather cool, but it just doesn't fit anything that I have. Okay, so what do we start off with dad's things? Oh yeah, we'll start with these. Of course, got to take the tag off here. So some of the stuff that he asked me to try and sell for him were things that came from his booth or like his showcase that he had. Um, and they just weren't moving. So he thought, why not give it a try on here for me? So these are lusterware. Um, I guess they look like egg cups to me. That's at least what I thought they were. Let me give you guys a little bit of a close up of that. So that's what they look like. They've kind of got like flowers on them. They got a blue edge to them. They almost look like goblets. And they do have, oh, they're Noritake. These are Noritake um, egg cups, goblets, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> they're in pretty good shape. They are a little dirty and dusty because these were sitting in our garage for quite a while. This one has a better mark on it of the Noritake. Oop, let's, uh, there we go. Hmm, I guess it doesn't want to focus for me. Stubborn webcam. But anyway, they're in good shape, no cracks or chips. They might need to be cleaned up a little, again, because they have been sitting in the garage for quite a while. And for the set of two, it's going to be $5, and it's number 34. So you're getting both pieces of Noritake for $5. Sure that shows better. So there we go. Number 34 is going to be $5. All right. All right. We'll go on to my items now. Now, this guy has seen better days. And I think if somebody likes kind of like a rustic nautical theme, they would definitely like this. It's a Fisher-Price toy, and it's a pelican. It is 
I think this is wood. It's got really great art on it. It doesn't work when you pull it on the ground. His beak opens up and some of his feathers are missing and broken off again due to age. One of his wings is completely gone, the decal. But it would still make a really great display piece, at least I think so. And I'm asking $5 for this Fisher Price toy, and it is number 96. Number 96 is $5. Hopefully that shows well. Yeah, those toys don't really hold that much value, but they are still cool. Let's do a dad item here. Okay. So these are really cool, and I am keeping one for myself just because I love the art on them. You're going to be getting, I think there's 22 of them in here. It's a lot of these double discount stamp books. This is what the front looks like. They're from Fredericksburg, Virginia, which is not that far from me. I wish this thing would focus. Come on now. You focusing or not? So this is what the back looks like. And the inside just has some really, really interesting art for the savings. These are very cool, and I wish this thing would focus so you guys could see it better. There we go, I guess. So art like that. Again, I wish you would focus. There we go. Just has really cool art like that in there. And if you have a shop, these would be great to throw in there. And for the price that we're asking, it's definitely going to be worth your buck to buy them if you want to just sell them for a couple bucks each. So that's what that looks like. So let me take the tag off here. And I think there are 22 of them in here. Uh, Laura, I don't know if they're green stamp books. I think they may be. Dad, you might be able to clarify that. Are these green stamp books? I don't, because it just says on the bottom here. It just says double discount stamp company. They almost look, I think that's what they are. And I, again, I wish this thing would focus. There we go. Double discount stamp company. The art is great. So this is all of them that you'll be getting. And let me see if I can count them. Yep, there are 22 of them in here. It is $15 and it's number 87. So you're getting all of these for $15 and there are 22 of them, number 87. Yeah, I didn't think they were green stamps. Whoa, Nathaniel, thank you very much. All right. So that's a dad thing. Another one of my things. Okay. So about this, I think this was at a place called Wonderbook here in town. There are a few of them, at least down where I used to live. So this is a Gabriel game. It's called Dizzy Spell. I've sold some of these a while ago. Like, or not this one specifically, but games that are made by this company. And it does have all the pieces, and it's, I guess it's a really good educational game. It is $5, and it's number 70. Number 70 is going to be 5 bucks. Let me show you guys the inside real quick. I don't know how to play it or anything, but I I know that everything is there. The box is kind of beat up, but it's still kind of cool. At least I think. I don't think it's a dice game, Laura. I like I said, it's a oh, it's a hidden word game. It says it right there, right in front of my face, and I'm not paying attention. Choose your pieces and build a word. So maybe it's kind of like a Scrabble kind of a game, maybe. But then again, I could be wrong. Dizzy Spell is what it's called. So that is $5, number 70. Okay. Now we're going to move on to another dad item here. All right, let's start with these. These are really, really cool. These are advertisements for... 
um, televisions, like pamphlets and stuff that you get back in the day. Uh, hey, Scott, thanks for stopping by. So let me show you what's in here. I don't want to show you all the price just yet. So we've got two of these. They're for Motorola TVs. I will open up the pink one because it is harder to close. I don't want to mess this one up. Same, same exact thing, just a different color. We've got this one also by Motorola. This one's from 1960. I will open this one up also because it's already kind of messed up. And then we've just got this little Zenith portable radio pamphlet. And then we've got two of these Zenith vacation special price tags that I guess that they used at electronic shops back in the day. So let me go ahead and open this one up real quick, just so that way you all can see it. It's really, really cool. It just doesn't really fit my style with what we've got. Now they're not perfect because they are rather old. But this is what it looks like. It's kind of like a big old poster advertising the different TVs that they have and the different consoles that you could buy. Flip it around. This is what it looks like. It's very cool, very graphic, not anything like they make nowadays. It does have issues. As you can see, there's some tears and some holes in certain places, at least on this one. And I will have one heck of a time trying to fill it up or fill it up, fold it up. All right, I'll fold that up later. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So we've got six items. I have it for $8 and it's number eight. So number eight is gonna be $8. They are very cool. And I think if you love this kind of stuff, this is, these are great. Let me show you this one for Motorola from 1960. This one is for the Motorola. Different consoles. And this one, this side I think has record players? Almost looks like different things. I think they're very cool. When we were fishing some stuff out of the garage, I was like, Dad, you really want to sell those? Because the art is just fantastic on them. So I, what did I say they were? Eight? Does anybody want it for six? Because there are six things. So buck a piece. I will do it for six if somebody wants them. They would, Amy, definitely be great framed or if you just want to keep them out. Well, Laura, I'm definitely glad that you made it. See what I mean? Pain in the neck. To fold up, but yeah. So I will go ahead, if anybody wants them, we'll go ahead and do them for six, since there are six items in there. And it's number eight. Mary, if you would like them. By the way, great sale today. You were You did way better than I did with my first sale. Yep, here it is, Mary, number eight. All right. So that was a dead thing. All right, so this is not old, but I know that a lot of us can't really go out to certain stores and pick things up that we like to own. This is a brand new bottle of Crabtree and Evelyn Rosewater Eau de Rose. Is this lotion? Ultra Moisturizing Hand Therapy. I know this is a really good brand, and I think they sell this at Nordstrom, if I'm not mistaken. And I know that Marshalls and TJ Maxx will sometimes get it, too. It's a brand new bottle. And it is $6, and it is number 37. So number 37 is going to be $6, and this is going to be for 3.5 ounces. Brand new. Box is in overall very good condition. Here's what it looks like again. All right. All right, so we got another dad item. Let's see what I can find. 
I done forgot. Oh, these are very cool. So this is a bag of Baby Grand Piano. I think these are gumball charms, I think. Dad, correct me if I'm wrong. Is that what these are, gumball charms? Something that you get as a kid when you bought a like a gumball or something back in the 70s. They're very cool, and they're, they appear to be new old stock. They don't look like they've been taken out of the packaging that they originally came in. Different colors. There's a ton of them in here, so you could do so many things with these. You could craft with them. You could make wind chimes out of them. You could do charm bracelets. So many possibilities with a fun old bag of baby grand pianos. So what we are going to do is, like I said, great crafting possibilities that that's your thing. So these are going to be, for the bag, $5, number 35. This whole bag of fun is five bucks. All right. Pick something else up. Okay. So I'm not really a jewelry person, but when I saw these, I thought they were interesting, and I went ahead and picked them up. They are Raffinati Mercury Dime Cufflinks. They are tarnished, as you can see. Let's see. Like I said, I hate when this camera does not focus. Come on. And take the tag off first. There is some greening. I don't know if that's going to even show either, but like there's like some green, kind of like what the Barbie dolls do when they when a certain metal's been sitting in them for too long. Like there we go. Like there's some green tarnish or something like that, like a buildup of something. And here's what the dimes look like. These would be great, I guess, on a guy's suit or something like that, or if you collect the cufflinks. Now you can probably put these through the sauna cleaner and it'll clean them up and they'll look real nice. Prairie Picking Girls, all you need to do is if you see something that you are interested in that's in the sale and um, you're going to comment the number in the live chat feed. And the first person that uh, Misty, Thrifter Junker, Vintage Hunter sees is the person who claims and gets the item. So these cufflinks are $15, they are number 46, and you are getting the box that goes with them. So number 46 is gonna be $15. Hi Mignon, thank you for stopping in, and Laura Melendez, I do wanna thank you for your subscription today. All right, so again, number 46 is gonna be 15 bucks. Hi, Ducky. Okay, so another dad item. So he's got a random assortment of things. So these are really cool, and you're going to be getting a set of these, by the way. So we've got one, two, three. So we've got four of these. I think they're really cool. They would be great framed or even there's so many things you could do with them. This is for Gessner Electric Services. It's just a patch. It's probably something that they ironed on a uniform back in the day. But they're pretty big, and they're all in really good condition. So here's the other one. I like the green that's on them. It's kind of like a money green or a like a nice, like maybe a 60s or 70s kind of green. These would be great framed, and if you own a shop, you could sell them. So what did I put? So we've got four of them here, and all four of them are going to be $10. So that's $2.50 a patch. And that's going to be number 31. So I put 12, but we're going to go ahead and do 10. So number 31 is going to be $10 for all of these electric service patches. The font is definitely cool. I, I like the lettering on them. Let me stick those back in here, and we will go ahead and 
move on. All right, what to show next is the big question. All right. So I've got some fragile stuff. That's what you hear rattling, sorry. All right. So do any of you guys like the 70s McCoy smiley face mugs and all the other accessories that they gave that they came up with back in the day? Um, I think it was a cookie jar, a bank, um, a planter, and then also like the mugs. So I've got two of these. Two of the McCoy smiley face mugs. And yes, Chapter 2 Vintage Co., if you're watching, these would make a great planter. You could give them hair if you wanted to do the spider plants. This one, the only issue is it's got some sticker residue on it, so that can easily be wiped off. These are the lighter yellow colors, not the darker yellow. So, and they both, let me take the price off of here, and I'll show you guys the bottoms. They do have the McCoy stamp on the bottom of both of them showing up better on camera than they are in person. So I'm selling both of these together. So both of the smiley face McCoy mugs, which are in very good condition, no cracks or chips. There might be some markings on them, but I'm sure barkeeper some will take them right off. Both are going to be $15 and it's number 95. So you're getting both Smiley face mugs for $15, number 95. Misty, I actually have the cookie jar and I also have the, I have the whole set. Unfortunately, I, when we were moving, I put a, like a roly poly, like chunky birch wood glass into one of them. And I accidentally chipped the inside and basically it's not ruined, but I know it's there. So it kind of bothers me. These are, yeah, I mean, I'm sure I'll find another one. All right. Moving along now. What else do we have? Okay. So these are really fun. I have a set of these that are, the tops of them are mint green. It's a set of salt and pepper shakers, aluminum. I don't know who makes them. It could be West Bend. It could be a number of different companies that issue these out. And they still have remnants of their spice that's in them. Now, they're not perfect. They are dirty. Some of the tops are going to be dented. And there's probably going to be some slight... I don't see any dents on the actual shaker itself. But expect it with age in very good shape. The inside appears to be in good sh uh, shape as well. A very loud squeak. This one does have some issues again due to age. At least the rim does. I hate that noise. So the pair of these are going to be six dollars and it is number 38. So you're getting the set for six dollars, number 38. Great for a camper, as Misty would say. Don't like that noise. All right. So that was a dad item. What else do I have? Now, some of the things that you guys are going to see that I've had in uh, my two other sales. So I did drop the price on some of the stuff because I just want to clear it out and get rid of it. All right. So I do have another mug. I found these a while ago and they just did not move for me. I think I gave the other one away to the uh, Goodwill, or maybe I sent it to the auction when I cleaned out at the beginning of the year. So yes, I did forget to mention that we are here in Maryland. So if you are buying something uh, and you're in California, or if you're in Canada, please do be mindful that the shipping is going to cost a little bit more than usual. Unfortunately, we don't have control over that. So this was really cool. I thought it would sell online, but I guess they just don't move. And when I looked them up, when I found them, they just, nothing popped up. It's a Lennox logo mug. Now, I've never seen one before up until I found uh, finding these. It does have a made in US mark on the bottom, and most of our Lennox today is made in China, as you all know. So, this has got some age. It looks like it came from a department store, judging by that uh, 
that old barcode. If I had to guess, I would say maybe 80s, 90s, like early 80s possibly, or even late 70s. It's in really good shape, no cracks or chips on it. It will, it is a little dirty, so it's gonna have to be uh, clean before you use it or display it. This mug is going to be $5, number 52. Number 52 for the single Linux mug is $5. It is very fancy. My door shut, yeah, it's shit shut. Yep, so very cool. I've never seen it personally, so I thought that was definitely something worth picking up, but hey, it is what it is. So definitely a cool piece. Okay, so another dad piece. So these are not terribly, terribly old, but they are brand new. And if you have an antique booth yourself, these would be great to make price tags with. It's a set of Porsche playing cards in an acrylic, um, what do they call this? An acrylic case. And I think the cards are sealed. Yep, these cards are sealed. So you're getting a brand new deck of Porsche cards. Or if you just collect car stuff, this would be a great piece for you to own. They are marked Fabrique in France in France. I can't, I don't have a very good French accent. But that's what the card looks like. So this set of cards is $5. It is number 45. I'm getting the whole uh, deck of cards here, both of them for five bucks. Yeah, they just issued phase one of reopening things up here in Maryland. Now, I'm sure some of you all, uh, know that I do work for Marshalls, which is a part of the TJX companies. I don't think that they will be reopening anytime soon. And part of the reason that I think that it won't be is because it can be a higher volume store in terms of like the number of people that will go there. So what they do is, I guess they're just opening up salons, and I think a couple of the antique um, malls here in town are also open because they're not going to generate a high volume of people. So social distancing will be easy in those places. Um, who just asked what the number? Oh, Judy did. So Judy asked what the number for the Linux mug is. It's number 52. Number 52 is the $5. Nate, if you have to go, I greatly appreciate you stopping in, and thank you for that awesome super chat. That is greatly appreciated. So this is what the mug looks like, Judy, if you were wondering. Yeah, that's a little crazy, Amy. I don't know why they decided to open everything up. What are they trying to do, make the virus worse? Okay. All right, so that was the dad item, so... Five bucks for number 45. Did that not get claimed already? I don't know. <laughs> I'm going back and forth here. So that was a dad item. Okay, what else do we got here? So these are kind of cool, and they do have their issues, but they would definitely be great for displaying at Christmas time. It's a set of these Gobel Angels, and they are playing um, instruments. There's only four of them. And again, like I mentioned, they do have issues and I will show you all what I mean. So they do have a mark on the bottom. Here's the first one. Oh, here's the mark for Goebel West Germany. These would be great for like a craft project, especially because of the cosmetic defects. Like this one, for example, probably won't be able to fly very well because his wing has a chip on it. And they all do have crazing, again, that is due to age and exposure to the elements over the years. So expect that with these. Here is the little drummer boy. Again, he also has the Goebel stamp on the bottom here. And this one, he might be able to fly, but he might fly a little jagged in a zigzag because part of his wing is chipped off right there. So I'm going to sell all of them, all four of them. 
they might not be Hummels, Joanne. I don't think I don't think they're Hummels, but they just have the global Germany stamp on them. So I'm gonna sell. Ooh, and I think I just broke another piece off of one of them. Darn it! So I think for the crafting purposes of them, I will do five bucks for all four. Number sixty nine. So number 69 is going to be $5, and I will mark that on here so that way I know. I originally had them at 12, and then I'm like, no, that's probably too much. So yeah, because a bunch of this stuff is broken on here. So five bucks for number 69 for the four little angels. Those aside here. All right, so another dad item. These are really cool for anybody who likes paper euphemera. These are receipts for, I think they're property tax forms. There are quite a bit of them in here. I'll show you guys the font in just a second. I want to count them up real quick. So we've got three, four, five. I think we've got nine of them in here. And this is what they look like. These would be great for like, a, what is that craft called nowadays? Junk journaling, if you wanted to put them in there. They have a date on them for 1912, I think. Let's see if that'll focus. Yep, 1912. I think that's the year. And then, oh, this is for, I think most of them are for New York. This one, the very last one here for the collector's receipt has a, I guess something that's like a code or something for the time, like for the law of the state of New York for these collector receipts. Mid-century is definitely what I would do with my kitchen too. That is what I hope to do in the future when I get my own place. So anyway, so you're getting all of these different tax collector's receipts for property. You're getting all of them for $5 and it is number 54. Number 54 is going to be $5. In that whole big lot of stuff. And again, these would be a great junk journaling thing if you like old paper. So these are five bucks, number 54. All right, another me item. So I've got these pin backs that I bought a while back. And one of the weird things about pin backs is unless it's something really, really unique or different, it's not really worth a ton of money. Now this one is here. I'll show you one of them. There's a ton. You're going to get a ton of them. If you buy them, this is for sweat, a bowl, weevil, vote McMahon. I don't know if this is for Ed McMahon or what, but I don't want to poke myself with that pin because that's not going to be fun, especially if I bleed on camera. Here we go. I had never seen them before. I got them for a really good deal, but they just are not worth my time to even try putting it online. So I can't remember how many there are, but, oh, yes, I did. I wrote it on the bag. There are 47 of them in here. You get 47 pins, and you are getting 47 pins for $7, and it's number five. So number five for the swat a bowl weevil pins. They're interesting. Ow! I just see I just poked myself with one of them. Cursed pins. You're getting all that for five bucks. Okay, that wasn't me. Now we gotta do a dad thing. If you guys hear a lawnmower going in the back, I apologize. I guess our neighbor's cutting his lawn. All right, so now we're going to move into something that I think Misty will really like. So this is a, I'm probably going to butcher this. It's Gottschall's PXEMX ointment, and it's got the product in the box. So this is what it looks like. I like the art on it. I like, this would be great for like a Halloween display, I think, just because of the colors, the black and the orange. 
This is for PB Gottschall in Harrisburg, PA. And let me show you guys the jar itself. It's in there. Oh, he had his price on there. Okay. And here's what the actual bottle looks like. Yeah, my grandparents actually had in their bathroom in their hallway had a, a shelf that they bought from an auction that came from a local motel. And they put a bunch of this kind of stuff in the bathroom. It was really, really cool. And as a kid, I didn't really, you know, pay attention to that kind of stuff. But nowadays I really do because it's it's neat stuff. So for the ointments, it's gonna be six dollars number eighty-five. So this is what it looks like. Again, it is $6, number 85. All right. Okay, so this is a very fun piece and I'm sure anybody who has a uh, gooseneck lamp would probably need one of these. It is one of those gooseneck lampshades. It's a wide one, so it's definitely a very nice one. It is rough around the edges, it's not smooth, and it is also rough where the bulb socket would go, but it is definitely very, very cool. And in very good condition, no cracks as far as I can see on it. This is $20 and it is number 61. Number 61 is $20. It's a nice shape. I've never seen one like this before. Is K1 C R A S H I T? Is that a troll? Do I need to block him? Maybe I should. No, he says I'll take it for 15 bucks no more. I don't know what, what's. I'm confused. <laughs> okay. So, again, these are really cool. They are. Dad, you're going to have to tell me again what these are because I think what they are is what I'm about to say, but I could be wrong. These are, I guess, ammunition boxes? Uh, this one is for Peter's Trap Loads. New old stock, very neat, great graphics on them. So that one's for Peter's, and this one is for Double A in Winchester. So we've got, how many of those do we have in here? So we've got three of these ones, three of those ones, and we have two that are from Double A. They all have issues, as you can see, because again, they were stored and just were never, I guess, just over time, they just didn't get used and they were found and then the rest is history. So you're getting five of these for $10 and it's number 49. So that's, what is that, $2 each? So you're getting five awesome pieces that you can fold up and actually put on display for 10 bucks. So that's $2 a piece. So you got those. And I'll show you guys the number in case you missed it. There we go. 10 bucks for number 49. Okay, 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 okay. Stuff is getting all tangled up. All right, so does anybody remember? I'm sure everybody remembers rotary dial phones. This one is stamped. Let me take the price tag off so nobody sees it. It's got a stamp on it for July of 1972. Hi, Tammy. Thank you for stopping in. See, it says it right there. I think this is for 
I don't remember what it's. It says July of 72 right there. The rotary does work, and it does have some errors, errors, errors on it. But if you hang it up, you can still hear the bell on it. Had this for quite a while, too. It's for IGA food liner, and originally, I guess it was in McConnellsburg, PA. It does have an area code on it, like for the fire and the police department. Maybe that was added on later, and they just used this for a long time. But you know what's really cool? And I remember when I, un or I think my dad may have un done these. They may, sometimes they may have reused different parts from older phones, but look, two different colors. We've got a pink one, and then there's like that tannish brown color, and that's from the hearing piece and the talking piece. So those were different colors, so I guess if a phone broke or they had leftover pieces in the manufacturing, they probably just put it in a different color. So, for this really awesome phone, which still has the landline cord on it, it is $15. It is number 83. Ow. So, number 83 is $15. These would be great for, like, a display if you have, like, furniture that's this color or if you're kind of going for a mid-century thing. All right. So, get that out of the way here. All right, so we have another set of cards here. So this one's really cool. This one has kind of like an Art Deco, like 40s, 30s, 40s look to it. Let me take one card out so you guys can see it better. They're made by Brown and Bigelow in St. Paul, Minnesota. Here's the blue one. Definitely got a 30s, 40s look to them. So we got that one in blue, and we've also got this one in red. Breakfast cheer on the bottom of the box. Let me take the tag off. And it says, Patent Pending, Brown and Bigelow, St. Paul, Minnesota. And it has a velvet top to it. This is $6 and it is number 11. Number 11 is going to be $6. And I think these may be a full deck. I think. If I'm not mistaken, it's a full deck, two deck. All right, good on that. All right, another me item. So I don't know, I've seen some of these before and I sold one of them. Thought I'd give it a go on here. I think these were meant to go in a department store back in the day, like if you had um, like a display with uh, the Franconia China. I think they were to sit, like, to help advertise it. And oh, let me make sure I don't show the price just yet. It's in good shape, no cracks or chips. The lettering on it is still in really good condition. But if you like these kinds of things, I think this would definitely be a great addition to your China set if you have this kind. So this is going to be $14, and it is number 66. For the Franconia China display piece, it's $14, number 66. Okay, that was a me, now we gotta go to Dad's. All right, we're going to really take a trip down memory lane for all of you. These are from the 1980s. They are, oh gosh, I just showed the price, didn't I? Whoops. So these are by Rolf's. I guess that was a department store. Maybe it was just a brand back in the day. Girls hair bows from the probably early to mid 80s. So we've got a blue one, we've got a red one, and we've got, and I just threw them on the floor because I am a klutz. And I'm in a very tight space right now. So we've got a blue one. We've got a red one. And we've also got a yellow one here. This one looks like it has fleur-de-lis on it. This one has like little rings that are 
clap to each other. And they say Vicky Davis on them. I'll show you guys the tag. Let me make sure they all say the same thing. Yeah, Vicky Davis on them. Let me show you guys that. So this is what's on all of them for the Vera companies. All silk, tote soy. And then on the side there, it says, I don't know if it's going to show up on camera. Made in Japan. So all of those, you're getting that with the box. It is $6, number 76. So number six, 76 is six bucks. Looks like 80s preppy. Yeah, maybe. I wasn't born in the 80s, nor did I live through it, so I don't know. That was him. Now we can move to me. All right, so I'm going to try selling this again. Oh, yeah, that, that Nickelodeon character, JoJo. So I'm going to try selling this um, Vera Wang Embrace set again. I did reduce the price on it. Shut the box. So it's that Vera Wang Embrace Green Tea and Pear Blossom fragrance set. It's brand new, never been used. Just the box has got some issues, as you can see. It's kind of, I, like I said, I don't really know how to describe the smell. It's a little strong. It's not, it's not something that anybody I know would probably wear. Not my mom or my grandmother or anything like that. Uh, this is $10, number 81. So essentially, $333 for the lotion, $333 for the spray, and $333 for the shower gel. So $10 bucks for the beer wang set, and it's number 81. Show that to you. Okay, now we got to do another dad item. Oh, I'll do these because these are really cool. So you're getting a whole bunch of these. And I pulled out one, I think I pulled out at least one of each. So you guys can take a look at what I'm. All right, so these are from the mid 50s. They are for stamps. And this is a lot. So save our valuable stamps. They mean savings to you. And they do have the 1955 stamp on them. There we go, 1955. And I'll tell you how many of them you're gonna be getting with this lot. So we've got this one here. This is kind of like a banner. This one says double stamps. No bad lot. So you're getting some of these. Our own trading stamps poster. Again, I think these are all from that same era, the mid 50s. And then getting one of these, which almost kind of looks like a flag. Valuable trading stamps free with purchases. So I think those are kind of cool. Don't fall. Bad lot. Is that everything that I want? Um, no, there isn't. There's one more thing. Again, another very cool piece. Did I show one of these? I might have. Yeah, I did. Now that I remember, one's pulled out. I think that was everything for this lot here. I think, if I'm not mistaken. I hope. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot here, and I actually put how many items there were on here. Uh, Laura, red one did not say A and P. As far as I know, it did not say A and P. They just say our own trading. Did I show this? Yeah, I did. See what I mean? This lot is confusing me. Okay, so they're just generic, as my dad said. So you're getting six of the Our Own Trading Stamps. There are seven of the Double Stamps posters, and there are four of the Valuable Trading Stamp banners. 
Now, I do want to mention, while these may be new old stock, there is going to be some damage to them, like maybe some bends and creases in the paper, like kind of up here. There's going to be a little bit of damage, again, because these are older. You're getting everything. So let's see. That makes it like 19 things. So what we'll do is we're going to do, I have it for 15. We're going to do number 59 for $12. So you're going to get everything that I just shared. So it's going to be 12 bucks for everything. Number 59, $12. And they wouldn't all fit in that sheet protectors. So well, maybe they would. Nope, some of the paper is just too big. So all this goodness here for 12 bucks, number 59. All right. So that was a dead thing. Let me move over to my stuff. Oh, you know what? There was another one of those angels in there. I'll, I guess I'll do that again another time. So I've got a couple of lots of these. Let me pull the first one out here. Bought these a while ago. They're from 1981, so they're not terribly old, but they do have attitude, and I love them. So we've got some alligator figurines. They do have a stamp on the bottom of them for... I wish I could read it while I was showing it. It's for the George George's Good Corporation in 1981. The City of Industry of California. They were made in Japan and has the year 1981 on them. This one is just sitting there crossing his arms like, really? You got to be kidding me. And this guy is just, I guess, loving, laying down and just wondering and maybe watching stupid people do stupid things. Like, can you imagine if these guys were in a pond in Florida and this guy is just watching everybody come into the lake, not knowing that there are gators in there. And then this guy is just laying there like, really, you idiots? I can't wait to watch what's going to happen to you. So this little set here, um, $8 for both of them. So it's number 72. And they do look stoned, Misty. Very much so. Maybe that's what they are. I don't know. So you're going to get that lot for 8 bucks, number 72. So that is the first one of those. All right, so now we gotta do a dad item. Now, he thought that you guys might really, really like these. And when we found them, we'd never seen anything with or like them before. So I'm sure you all know what chalkware is. It was very popular in the 30s and 40s and into the 50s. Um, we found, let me make sure I didn't, I don't pull the one out with the tags. I don't want to show that to you. Did we price these? Oh, we did. Okay, yep. So we found a bunch of fruit chalkware with the original boxes, something we've never seen before. Now, as you can see, they've come off of the glue that was in the packaging originally. So we've got an apple and a pear. We've got cherries. And they're all in really good condition. Like, these were never used. And this one, I think, is this a peach, maybe? I think that's a peach. Peach or an apricot. So what they have, like, the boxes are very cool in themselves, too. Like, I like the art on them. It looks like a window, and then you've got the flower garden growing there. Here's what it looks like on the back. I think it just tells you what to do. So the directions for hanging. So we're going to sell these as a set. And all of them, which one has the price? Here we go. So he would like $25 for the four of them. And it's number 36. Number 36 is $25. And you're getting all four of them for that price. Again, the reason we priced them like that is because they are in the original boxes, something we've never seen. And maybe none of you guys have seen them either. Who knows? All right. That was a dad item. Let's move over to me now. So these are very cool. I've had these again for a while. And 
I assume based on the fact that this has a barcode on it that it's not very old, but we will see. It's a set of these Turbo 1000, I think these are walkie-talkie headphones. Here's what the back looks like. There's no date on them to indicate how old they are, like no actual date, but there is a date code. I don't know if that could be translated into anything special. They are in the box, and I assume they've never been used. They don't look used to me. Look, here's one. And then here is the other. So I don't think these were ever used. So they're in the original box. That's why I grabbed them. So these are going to be $20, number 89. So this set of Turbo 1000 Walkie Talkies is 20 bucks since number 89. They would just be neat if you're like an electronics person or if you remember having these in your childhood. Great little piece of nostalgia. They are big. I, I was pleasantly surprised to see that. But yeah, definitely a really cool piece of electronic technology. $20, number 89. Okay, so that was me. Now we gotta move over to dad here. All right, for any of you who missed out on the pianos, we have another lot of them. Again, great crafting material. So many possibilities if you're like a music buff or are just into the old gumball charms. It's a new and sealed bag of them. So this is going to be $5, number 39. So you're getting another bag of awesome baby grand piano charms for five bucks, number 39. All right. Okay, so I guess since those alligators were a huge hit, we'll go ahead and we'll do another lot of them. Same company and everything, different pose. Well, this one you guys saw before, the stone alligators. So we got that one. Got that one. And then we've got this one, which I don't know if he's hungry or if he just forgot where the heck he was. Same company, the George's Good Corp. So you're getting both of those. God, I cannot hold stuff the right way in these cameras. So we got that one and we got this one. $8. They are number 94. Number 94 is going to be $8. Oh, I'm shaking. I guess I didn't eat enough. <laughs> so we got those guys. They're very fun. And that is the second lot of those. Okay. So any Pyrex buffs out there? Anybody who likes their Pyrex stuff? We, I call this like science apothecary Pyrex. They are beakers. Oops. Like for the science world. So we got three of those. If you had the holder for these, they would make a great like vase for flowers or if you just have other fun apothecary stuff, these would be great. So you got three of them and I will show you guys the Pyrex logo real quick on them. And they are beakers, if I didn't say that already. So here is the logo. It's got that screen stamp on it. You're getting all three of those for $15, number six. So you're getting all three of those beakers for $15, and it's number six. All right, so we got those. Move those down. I don't want to break them. God forbid. All right, so we've got some more. I'll just show him another thing of his. 
I had to tape these because I didn't want to put tape on the actual box themselves because they are kind of dead stock. We've got two bags of tea. This one is Jane O brand or Jane O in a purple color. And this has a really cool back on it. Delicious hot or iced, so you can make it either way. And again, it's not focusing. So we got that one. And this one we all know because this brand is still around today. We've got Lipton Tea. The art on this is fantastic. I absolutely love the images of the Lipton guy on there. I think this might be British. No, I don't think Lipton is British tea. No, it's. I think it's English. Never mind. So these are really cool. You're going to be getting both of these for one money. It's going to be $6 for both of them. So that's three bucks a piece, number 91. So you're getting both of those iced tea packs for six bucks and the number is 91. Put those down. All right, so this is really cool. Well, cool to somebody who likes this stuff. This is Philosophy. It's a Christmas um, scent. It's crisp berry, and it's got kind of like a minty smell to it. It's new. The only thing that is, sorry, guys, I had to scratch my nose there. The seal is off of it, so you can smell it if you want to. So it's in the box, and I know this stuff can be pricey. And if you are looking to get a Christmas gift early for somebody, this is probably the best time to get it. It's a brand new big bottle. It is, let me look at the fluid ounce count just so you guys know. It's 16 fluid ounces. It's kind of like a sparkly, shimmery, almost like a purplish red color. I think it's for, you can use it for shampoo, shower gel, and bubble bath. So it's got three purposes. It is shampoo, bubble bath and shower gel so it's got three things that you can use it for it is ten dollars and it is number four so there we go ten bucks for number four it is a very good brand out of the leaf poodle definitely is all right this is so this is something that dad has had for quite a while. We've seen a couple of others online, but they just haven't like moved or anything like that. But it's interesting. And I think the reason they don't move or they haven't moved is because nobody knows what the heck it is. And we don't even know what this is. It's called Jake and Jonah. And it's a chalkware like head with two different faces on it. It's kind of creepy. So this is one face, smiley. It almost has the look of the ventriloquist dummy face. And this one is Jonah. On the back, it's got a patent pending and a trademark stamp on it. And it just says Jonah and Jake on it. It is very creepy. And we didn't, we don't know what the heck this thing is. But it's got two faces. So it's very interesting. Like I said, we don't even know what it is, and people who have been listing them online don't know what it is. So he would like $25 for number 63. Number 63 is going to be $25. I've <laughs> been disturbed and I've had beer. Like I said, we think it's odd, too. We don't know what the heck it is or what it was even used for. It, it's just one of those things that he's had for a while, and he's tried moving before, but it just hasn't worked out. All right. So that was one of his. Let me just show you something else of his. These are kind of cool. Again, kind of like a new old stock kind of a thing. So these are, I guess, little banks, and they have Gerber orange juice on them as the ad. They're tin. These are possibly maybe like a children's toy, like the play food grocery thing. So we've got two of them. 
Oh, maybe they're not. Maybe they had uh, juice in them at one time. I don't know, but I could be wrong. But here's the back of it. it has the ingredients. It has the Gerber products um, company on it, the back of it in Fremont, Michigan. They would just be great for display in like a vintage cabinet or something like that. So these are $4 for the set, and it's number 47. So you're getting both cans for $47. So they are just banks. They're not like play food or anything like that. The colors are definitely amazing on them. I'll give you all another close up. You know, the original Gerber baby just had her 90th birthday a couple years ago. So I thought that was really cool. So those are definitely neat. Anybody looking for some classic movies? I have this... Um, DVD from AMC that I tried selling the last time and it didn't move, so I thought I'd give it a go again. So these have, um, it's Hollywood Tough Guys, Hollywood Classics for Humphrey Bogart, Edward G. Robinson, George Rapp, and John Garfield. Movies include Beat the Devil, which also has Gina Lollobrigida. Um, Edward G. Robinson is in, in a Thunder City, or in Thunder in the City. I can't read. Thunder in the City. Outpost in Morocco is George Raft's film, and They Made Me a Criminal, which is John Garfield's film. So it's a brand new and sealed DVD, as you can see. The top still has that uh, manufacturer seal. This DVD is $3, and it is number 65. Brand new and sealed. So if you're looking for a classic film to watch, now you've got four of them for three bucks. Oh God, Jeffrey, really? Oh my Lord. Oh God. Oh my God, I can't. That's bad. <laughs> Jeffrey, I'm trying to do a live show now. Come on. I can't with these comments. <laughs> Lord help me. Oh. Okay. I think I'm a little... But more settled down. Okay, what are we? Okay. Ooh, I should have covered that up. All right, I'm not sure that anybody's gonna want these, and I've been a little bit more embarrassed that I they I had these because they're not really my thing. Maybe they might be someone else's. Um, they are a Playboy thing and. Like I said, they came with a lot of magazines that I bought a while ago. They would not not include them in the lot if I bought the stuff. So unfortunately, I had to get them. They are, one of them I think is relatively modern, like within the last maybe like 15 years, and the other one's from 1989. I did cover up some of the places just because I wasn't sure. So the first one is Playboy Book of Lingerie from like 1989. Like I said, these came in a lot of magazines that I purchased a while ago, and the seller had to include them. They did not want to separate them out. So I tried to censor them as best I could, and I really want them out of the house because I don't want them. This one is entitled Playboy's Locker Room Fantasies. These do have nudes in them, so I really just want them out of the house. <laughs> Thrifty Sand. I know. They came with a lot, I promise you. I like older pinup, not this kind of stuff. And I guess I just shared the price. So I really want them gone. Um, it's gonna be $6. I had eight, but I wanna take six. And it's number 17. So guys, if this is something that you want, or gals, either way, I would really like them out of my house because I don't like this kind of these kinds of magazines, or at least this kind of thing. So six bucks, number 17. I'm hoping somebody takes them because I'm embarrassed, especially because my mom is watching this. <laughs> Please, somebody take them. I'm begging you to take them. All right, so this is something else that I've had for a while, uh, the Fashions of 1776 doll. And 
It's by the Cryish Company, released for Kmart. And yeah, I'm sharing the price because I'm a little distraught and a little embarrassed from the other one. No, I will not friend mail those magazines. So anyway, you guys will see it. Um, it's going to be, I have it for eight. I want to do five bucks just to get rid of it. It's got that little corner where I think the price tag was. I know he's watching, Laura. He, both of them are watching, and that's why I was a little horrified to even put those in this sale because I just wanted them gone. Worst comes to worst, I throw them in the donate pile. I don't care. Somebody else can deal with them. So that's for Kmart. So five bucks for her, number 76. Five bucks for her. Oops. Okay. All right. So you guys remember this. This was something that I picked up a while ago. And it's one of those handmade Annie things from the early 80s, probably a craft project. You could either hold it with two handles or you could just carry it like this. And overall, it's in good shape. It's got no stains or anything like that on it. No, I did not hide them under my mattress. It's re relatively small, so I think a kid could probably use it. And it's number, or no, it's $5. It's number 53. Number 53 is going to be $5. Very true, Thrifty Santa. It could be a face mask. I don't think, or maybe that's a small little stain right there on the heart. Right there, maybe a water damage thing or something. You could probably wash it. But yeah. Five bucks for the little Annie purse. Uh. Oh, I gotta do one of Dad's things. Here's another one of Dad's things. It's a big old bag of these um, Native American toys. They're not marked or anything. I think they were just kind of like a generic dime store toy thing. A big old bag of them. You know, and there's so many crafting possibilities or if you just wanna put like a display up or something. They're very, very cool. And it is $8, number 64. Great crafting possibilities. There's a ton of little figures in here. So this is definitely well worth it. Bunch of cool little things. Prices are a lot. So this is that uh, train lot that I had the last time. It's just got a bunch of different stuff in it. Bunch of miscellaneous things. Jeffrey might want to consider this one for Aaron because I know he's a train guy. They've got a bunch of different things in here. The shell, um, petroleum caboose, and then we've got, like, there's not even, it's like a mismatch of tracks and different trains and things like that. There's a bunch of different stuff in here. There's another train. I think the, uh, the shell petroleum cart has West Germany on the bottom of it. Honestly, Jeffrey, I have no idea. This was just something I picked up at the at the bins. Like, I, there, it's a mismatch of different scales and stuff. I don't know what Aaron's really into, though. There's like a, it's a big old mismatch of different things. It is fifteen dollars, and it is number woo, fifty-five. So number fifty-five is fifteen dollars for this box of train stuff. There's so many different things. Jeffrey, if you want pictures, I'll direct message you on Instagram if these don't sell so you can see real quick. 
hopefully. All right, so that was my thing. We got dad some stuff too. Now these are really cool. So these are called electrotype plates. And I think, Dad, you might be able to explain this better than I can with what these are. I guess they were used like to help make metal molds. They're kind of cool and they would look great framed. See, so they have they're embossed into this like heavy cardboard material. They're for French Renault. This one's for green Renault. I think there are a couple of duplicates in here. So there, these would be great framed or like misty. I think these would be great for your shop. Just framed up because they're definitely neat. So how many are here? There's one, two, three, four, five. So there's seven of them. Laura, I think they're press molds or something like that. I don't know. Dad, you might be able to explain them. Yeah, they're electrotype boards for metal printing plates. So for the seven of those, they're going to be $10, number 62. Like I said, these would be great framed if you're kind of into the industrial looking thing. They would be great. So that was a dad item. All righty, so I've had these again for the last two sales. They just haven't moved. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lot them together and see if they sell. So they are two ashtrays. One is the Ponderosa ashtray, which does have some like cosmetic defects around the rim. And then this one is for Mariana Lumber Company. This one's milk glass and it's got a made in the United States stamp on the bottom there. So I'm gonna sell both of these for one money. It's gonna be six bucks, number 57. So you're gonna get both of these for $6, number 57. All right, so good, those move. Okay. Oh, this would be good. This is another good crafting item, I think. So this is some old Monopoly game pieces. It's got the money, some of the cards, and a bunch of like the figures and stuff like that, the old die. Uh, let me see, the Parker Brothers mark on the bottom. Um, it's got a bunch of different copyrights on it. So 1935, 1936, 1951, 1952, and the latest being 1954. There we go, right there, 1954. So this is a whole bunch of great stuff. If you have a board and you don't have the pieces for the 1950s game, this would be great. So this is going to be $5, number 51. Number 51 is going to be $5. Get all that stuff. If you have an old Monopoly game, this is perfect. Okay, what else do we have? Oh, um, I guess we can do another round of alligators since those seem to be a little bit of a hit. So we've got this one who is looking like he's forgotten something. And then we've got this one. Similar poses, just that you guys have seen in the earlier ones.
And these ones are also $8 and they're number 82. Number 82 is going to be eight bucks. All right. Is that mine? Oh, that was mine. Okay. All right. So next lot of stuff in this green bin. It's a bunch of different vintage farm animals. Most are vintage, I think, and some are a little bit modern. Like this one right here, which says made in the U.S., is made of rubber. Like it's like really hard rubber. So you can definitely say this has got some age to it. Uh, Zeno, the gators are from 1981. So they're about 40 years old. So we've got ones that look like that. We've got some plastic ones that are like that. And like this one is like really old and it's pretty brittle, it's rubber. There's a bunch of cool stuff in here. Cowboys and it's miscellaneous. It's not like a part of a set or anything. So what we are going to do is for that whole box of vintage figures, we are going to do $10 and it is number nine. So number nine is going to be $10. Again, more great crafting supplies. I think these would be fun to maybe like do like a, like a, not a decoupage, but kind of like assemblage boxes, I think they're called, if you want to do like a farm assemblage. All right. All right, so I'm glad these are moving out of here. All right, so I have one more set of gators that I would like to move. This one's got, he's folding his arms, crossing his arms, and this one's got the kind of like, I forgot all about that look. So these ones are $8, number 27. So number eight is, or no, $8, number 27. Okay. So that's the end of that. All right. This off here. So this is something that's very cool. It's very industrial. It's a, I don't even know how to describe this, like a door opener, like the latch that holds the doorknobs. One's got a porcelain knob and the other one has like an ornate metal knob on it. I don't know if I just shared the price or not. This part right here, the little decorative ornates piece right here is, it's going to show it's bent, so it might need to be replaced. And there is rust on it, but rust just does give a character. If you like old hardware, this is definitely great for you. Did I just say great for you? Great for you. So this might either just be great for reusing and repurposing, or if you just want to put it on display somewhere. So this is going to be, where did I put the price? It's going to be $10, number 58. Number 58 is going to be $10. Now, it is rather heavy. I do want to mention to you, it's not exactly light, so this might be a little bit of money to ship out to you wherever you're located. But it's definitely got a great ornate look to it and is very industrial. And porcelain, I don't know if that's dirt or it looks like a little bit of a concave dip in there, but that is definitely very cool. Very neat. There is one more piece that I do want to share from my dad's stuff that I think would be very, very cool if you like the industrial look. I didn't price it or anything. Like, I didn't put a blue piece of tape on it with anything. So this is very cool. They're very easy to put together. It's a bunch of vintage razors, all American, and he put them in this record frame. This would look great in like a bathroom, a man cave, or if you have that industrial look to it. Oh, that's right. That's another thing I forgot to mention. Shoot. Thanks, Nesting Haven. Make sure everything is on the live chat, not top chat. So that way you see everything accurately. 
So there's a number of different blades that are in here. Uh, we got Gillette, there's Tor Torero, Oxford, Old Hickory, Dot, Asco, Ludlow, Beverly, Genuinely. So this is just very, very cool. And my dad has got a ton of blades. That's just what, yes, one does say that, Nifty. And yeah, they're very cool. And he's he's a razor blade enthusiast. I'm telling you, this guy's got so many different things like this. So he is asking $25 for this really awesome piece. It would be great in the bathroom or like I said, man cave. So it's 25. And if you are interested, comment the letter R for razor. So $25 letter R. Let me get up a close up for you all so you guys can see the different blades that are in here. All right. And we're going about a half, an hour and a half here, guys. Sorry if this is so long. I've just, I've got so many good things. And is it buffering, Judy? I'm sorry. You might have to refresh your page. All right, so here is that 80s Care Bear, Care Bear game. The Touch and Tunes game. I don't know if it's intact or, like, complete, so I can't say for sure. But if anybody had this game in the 80s and just wants a nostalgic flashback, this would be great for you. Here's what the inside looks like. And it's got most of, or some of the cards here. So this is by Parker Brothers. I don't know if I said that the last time, but yep. And this game is going to be $5. It is number 26. Number 26 is going to be $5. Oh. That had a couple more things too. So these, I guess, held money at one point when they were going to the different banks. They are, I guess they held cash at one point. Here's one for the Farmers and Merchants Trust Company that was in Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. And this one is for the First National Bank of Nevada. So you're getting both of those for one money. So this is going to be 10 bucks for both of them. So it is number 13. So you're getting both of these Bank bags for ten dollars, number thirteen. I think this might be the last thing it is. These are interesting. I again, my dad said again that they're not something you see every day, and they are small, so they can get lost. They're tobacco tags. And like I said, some of the stuff that he used to find is the things that I've never even heard of before. But then again, these are from a different decade before I was even born and probably before my dad was even born. That's not focusing, but it's a whole bag of different like embossed metal tobacco tags. And they are $5 and it is number 18. So you're getting this little bag and there's a ton of these little tobacco tags in there. So five bucks, great crafting material or just great little pieces of collectible memorabilia. Whole bag of them. All right. All right, so we've got that um, Oda Gary unicorn mirror the two-piece mirror, the lacquer mirror. It's got the Japan stamp on the back with the unicorn on it. It is in overall good shape. There are scratches and stuff due to age. I would say this is probably from the 70s or 80s. You guys probably did see 
this in my last two sales because it just hasn't moved. This is going to be $15 and it is number 98. I have marked it down a couple of times. So number 98 is $15. I hate when this camera doesn't focus. Another significantly lowered price item is that My Fair Lady perfume full box. If you haven't seen it before, I'll show it to you all again. I've had this in my other two sales and it just didn't move. Full bottle of My Fair Lady, again, being difficult with the focusing. All full, never, I guess it was never used. Be great for your bathroom if you like the vintage perfumes or if you like to wear it. So this is $5, number 74. Mark that down to five bucks just to clear it out, number 74. And that's what the box looks like. All right, so this was rather cool. I don't know if it's old, but when I saw it, I kind of had to have it. It's a paper mache maraca, I think. It's got something shaken in it. It's a skull. It may be like a Dia de los Muertes thing, Day of the Dead celebration thing. It's just a rattle, overall in good shape. The paint's kind of faded on it. I don't know if it's got any age to it or if it's modern. Like I said, I just don't know. So this is going to be $10. It is number 54. Great for Halloween. Okay, let's go one more time. He is awesome, a Vision and Vintage Co. Definitely. Definitely different. I'd never seen anything like it before. Okay, so we're getting down to the last few items here. If you've stuck around with me for this long, I appreciate it. Okay. All right, so I had these in my last sale, and they did not move. Hopefully, they will move this time. These fish salt and pepper shakers. They look a little scared with those bug eyes. Maybe they're like, oh, are we going to get hooked today? So they are in pretty good shape, no cracks or chips, and they both have their stoppers. So those are $8, and it's going to be number one. Number one is going to be $8 for the fishy, for the bug-eyed fishy salt and pepper shakers. I think they might be rainbow trout. All right. All right, you guys, I'm sure remember this, the wooden nautical lamp. Had this for a little while, and I've marked it down. This will be the third time that I marked the price down. Only thing that really seems to be missing is the pipe that the sailor is supposed to have in his mouth. Everything else looks to be in perfect order. If you have a beachy bathroom or if you have, like, beachy decor, this would be perfect for you. It does have the Made in U.S. stamp on the bottom of it. And it is going to be $8, number 93. So number 93 is $8. All right. So these, again, were, sold, were in the last sale. It's those little model power miniature signs. Not exactly sure of the age because they do have a barcode on them. And these are going to be, what do I have in that? So I'm going to do five bucks, number 87. Number 87 is going to be $5. So that's half the price of what I have it for now. Little miniatures, they have Hong Kong on them. All right, so good on that. 
All right, does anybody have a PS4? Because I don't really know much about any of this kind of stuff, nor am I a Minecraft person. I'm just not into the gaming thing. So this is Minecraft's story mode, a Telltale game series. I looked at the disc and it looks to be pretty clean. The case, however, has got some different stories. Like it's completely broken here. It's kind of crushed in. The paper insert appears to be in good shape and there's some sticker residue from, I guess, a retail store. Thanks to Vision and Vintage Co. I look forward to your sale and I hope all is well with you. So it's gonna be eight bucks and it's number 24. Hopefully somebody's kid will like that. Is that everything? Well, that does look to be everything. I do appreciate you all sticking with me, especially because we're almost, we're about an hour and a, like 45 minutes long here. So do remember that to send me an invoice, skullking95680 at yahoo.com. It's going to be in the description box below. And I know there might be a little bit of confusion later on with those alligator poses. So I will send some of the pictures along with the lot number. So that way I know who purchased them. So I will see you all soon. Thank you all so much for tuning in. And I will see you all very soon. Take care, guys.